Okay, if everybody take a seat, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, sorry for the late start. I will now call to order the meeting of the Omaha Planning Board. The Planning Board members that are here today are Sidney Franklin, Jeff Moore, Patrick Morris, Michael Pate, Jorge Sotolongo, Dave Rosacker, Vice Chair, and I'm Greg Rosenbaum, Chairman. Members of the city staff that are in attendance today are Eric England, Assistant Planning Director, Mike Carter, Current Planning Manager, Jennifer Taylor of the City Law Department, and Debbie Hightower is our Recording Secretary. Our rules of procedure are as follows. Notice of this hearing has been published. Copies of today's agenda are located on the table in front of us. You're welcome to come down and pick one up. The cases on the consent agenda will be heard first. Consent cases have been recommended for layover, have already been heard, or are perceived by the planning board to be non-controversial, therefore will be read and voted on without the opportunity for your testimony. If you wish to testify, you may remove the case from the consent agenda. When each consent case is read, I will ask if anyone wants the case removed. If you do, please stand up and say so, and the case will be removed. This case will then be heard in the order in which it appears on the regular agenda after we go through the consent cases. When the case is heard, you will have the opportunity to come to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and give your testimony at that time. When hearing cases on the regular agenda, the board will first hear from the applicant. After the applicant states their case, we will hear from the proponents, and then we will hear from the opponents. After both sides are heard, the public hearing will be closed, and no additional testimony will be permitted unless a board member requests additional information. When at the podium, please clearly state your name, address, and whom you are representing for the record. Your testimony is very important to us. In the interest of time and courtesy to others, please be short and to the point. We will try to limit each case to 10 minutes. Those directly involved in the case, please speak, for, speak first. We, re we, request, we request that large groups select a spokesperson to represent that group, therefore eliminating repetitive testimony. When giving testimony, please provide new information and try not to repeat what has been previously said. We do ask that all speakers and others be treated with courtesy and with respect. In that regard, please remain silent while seated and please turn off your cell phones. Our decision to approve, deny, or continue a case made here today will be forwarded to the City Council for another public hearing and final disposition by the City Council. Conditional use permits are an exception to this rule. The board's decision made here today on conditional use permits are final and not forwarded to the city council. Lastly, upon the advice of the law department, all communications to board members from attorneys or other interested parties should be transmitted through the planning department so that they are made a part of the public record. The department will then transmit all that information to the board as well as to the rest of the public. A current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act can be found in a white binder in this room, and there are no changes to the consent, ag consent agenda, so I'm going to get started with the reading of those. <clears throat> agenda item number four, case C12-22-244, applicant Sean Nagus with Ponca Trails, LLC. It is on for layover. Request. Preliminary plat approval of Ponca Trails, a subdivision outside city limits with a waiver to section 5382 g pavement width, 5399 sidewalks, 5382B cul-de-sac length, 5393 street surfacing to allow asphalt pavement and to waive installation of curb and gutter, 5396 storm sewers, and 53910 streetscape standards to reduce street lighting. This was laid over from our October meeting of 2022, location 142.22 Calhoun Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number five, case C10-23-24, C12-23-25. Applicant Elkhorn Public Schools, it is on for approval. Request preliminary plat approval of Iron Bluff South and final plat approval of Iron Bluff South Lot 1, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to R5. This was laid over from our February 1st meeting. 
location southeast of george b lake parkway and i street anyone wish to have this removed okay seeing none agenda item number six case c8-22-166 c10-22-169 applicant lanaha nurseries inc it is on for approval request rezoning from ag to dr with approval of a special use permit to allow agricultural sales and service in the DR district. Portions of the property are located within the flood fringe overlay district. This was laid over from our June of 2022 meeting. Location, Northeast at 258th Plaza and West Center Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Yes, please remove Okay, it will be Bob and it'll be put back on the agenda. Agenda item number seven, case C8-22-255, C7-22-259, applicant Sean Negus with Ponca Trails, LLC. It is on for layover, request approval of a special use permit to allow development located within the North Hills Environmental Resource Overlay District, along with approval of a major amendment to the presumed conditional use permit pursuant to section 55-883Q to allow a stable in the DR district. This was laid over from our October 2022 meeting, location 14222 Calhoun Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, agenda item number 11, KC 10-21-9, C12-21-10, Applicant Celebrity Homes, Omaha. It is on for layover, request preliminary plat approval of Deercrest North, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from DR to R4. Location, southeast of 114th and State Streets. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 12, KC 10-23-48, C12-23-49. Applicant, Hagen Hills, LLC. It is on for approval. Request preliminary plat approval of Hagen Hills, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR and R4. A portion of the property is located within the flood fringe overlay district. Location, northeast of 168th Street and Military Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 13, KC 10-23, dash 50 c12 dash 23 dash 51 applicant brookstone meadows inc better senior living it is on for layover request preliminary plat approval of brookstone meadows replat 3 a subdivision inside city limits with rezoning from ag and r7 to r7 along with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district location southeast <coughs> excuse me southeast of 204th and Harney Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 14, case C10-23-52, C12-23-53, applicant Indian Creek North, LLC. It is on for layover. Request preliminary plat approval of Indian Creek Preserve, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to R3 location southeast of 200, 204th and 4th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. I gotta get some water here. Agenda item number 15, KC 10-23-54, applicant Edna Francis it is on for approval. Request rezoning from GC to R435 location. 405 and 411 Bancroft Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 16, case C10-23-55. Applicant James Simola, it is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to NBD. Property is located within an ACI, Area of Civic Importance over Overlay District. Location 2219 South 13th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 17, KC 10-23-56. Applicant, G&I X Montclair on center, LLC. 
It is on for approval. Request approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district location 13105 West Center Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? <coughs> Seeing none, agenda item number 18, KC 10 23 57. Applicant, hope I say it right, Avarotis Alba LLC. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to CC. Property is located within an ACI area of civic importance overlay district. Location 3510 South 24th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 19, KC 10 23 59, C 10 21 155. Applicant Drew Sova, it is on for approval. Request rezoning from HI to CBD, along with approval of a major amendment to the Neighborhood Conservation and Enhancement District and repeal of the ACI Area of Civic Importance Overlay District. Location 1107 and 1113 Nicholas and 1001 North 12th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 21, KC 11-5-178B. Applicant Brookstone Meadows, Inc., Vetter Senior Living, is on for layover. Request approval of a major amendment to the Plan Unit Development Overlay District, location southeast of 204th and Harney Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 22, KC 8-23-60. Applicant Gabriela Martinez, it is on for approval. Request approval of a special use permit to allow daycare services general to be located in the R435 district. Location 3252 Monroe Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 23, KC 8-19-127. Applicant McNeil Company Builders, it is on for approval. Request. Approval of special use permit to allow development in the ED North Hills Environmental Resources Overlay District. Location 10409 North 72nd Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. <coughs> Agenda item number 24, case C8 23 61. Applicant CH Engineering Inc. It is on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the presumed special use permit pursuant to section 55883Q to allow major utility facilities in the DR district with a waiver to section 55108 height <coughs> to allow a 62 foot tall structure. Portions of the property are located within the flood fringe overlay district location northeast 120th and Fort Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 25, KC 8-23-63, C 10-23-62. Applicant, David Schaefer, it is on for approval. Request, approval of a special use permit to allow automotive sales in the GC district with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district. Location, 1941 South 42nd Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 26, case C8-23-65, C7-23-66, C10-23-64. Applicant, Matter Phileas of Nebraska, Inc. On for approval, request approval of special use permit to allow large group living in the R4 district. Approval of a major amendment to the presumed conditional use permit, permit pursuant to section 55883Q to allow religious assembly in the R4 district and approval of the rezoning from R435 to R4. Location 5912 South 36th Street and 3614 Y Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 27, case C7-23-67. Applicant Noddle Companies is on for approval. Request approval of a conditional use permit to allow outdoor entertainment in the CBD. Property is located within an ACI area civic importance overlay district. Location, 724 North 16th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? 
Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 28, case C7-23-68, C10-23-71. Applicant Aslan Companies is on for layover request. Approval of a conditional use permit to allow multiple family residential in the CC district with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district. Location, 14441 and 14505 DuPont Court. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 29, case C14-23-69. Applicant, Douglas County, is on for approval. Request approval of the vacation of the Hayden Street and 117th Street right-of-ways located north of State Street, south of Rainwood Road, east of 120th Street, and west of Blair High Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 30, case C14-23-70. Applicant, Douglas County, is on for approval. Request approval of the vacation of a portion of Rainwood Road located west of 84th Street to its western terminus. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, I think that's it. Do we have a motion for the consent cases that... Okay, I will. Okay, I just read through all the consent cases. Uh, one was pulled off, agenda item number six. No others were pulled off. That's fine, you don't, you can leave them on, pull them off, but if you leave them on consent, no further action will be taken today. If they're on for layover, then it'll be a month or two months or whatever down the road. But if they're on for approval, they'll be approved and no further action for approval or layover <coughs> will be taken today. So if everybody's got that, any questions? For the layover cases, if they are back on next agenda, we do not send new notifications to neighbors. Um, if you are here for one of those cases, you can just call into the planning department um, probably about mid-March, you know, give us about a week, week and a half uh, before we set the, the next agenda for the April meeting. But they can check in with us and we can tell you if it is on for April. If it is on a later May or later, then we would send new notifications. Okay, do we have a motion for the consent items that were on for approval? Motion to approve case numbers 5, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, and 30. Second. We have a motion and second. Debbie, please record the vote. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did you get them out? Did you get everybody there? I think so. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion for the consent items that were on for layover? <clears throat> motion to layover cases 4, 7, 11, 13, 14, 21, and 28. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Orlongo? Yes. Rosecker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. Those that were left on consent, no further action, will be taken today. You are welcome to stay or you are free to leave. It's up to you. Okay, we're going to change things before we get to the administrative. We got agenda item number 31, case C7 17 175, C7 21 121, C7 22 26, 
applicant Malibu Properties LLC, West Omaha Sports Complex LLC. Request conditional use permit to allow indoor sports and recreation in the CC district, along with a parking adjust adjustment for a mixed use development. Location, generally Southwest at 210th Street and Cumberland Drive, Eric. Yeah, so uh, just for those in the audience on your agenda, it's actually in reference the last item under discussion. There's no specific 31, but it is in our packet on number 31. So um, yes, obviously this is before you. This is not a public hearing, although if the board wants to hear um, from the applicant or the property owner, they have that right to call them up. I would just say that it's not really meant for a full-blown public hearing discussion. Um, but there can definitely be a statement made or if you have a specific question. Um, so yes, this item is uh, before you today um, to determine whether the item should be placed on the April Planning Board agenda for a show cause hearing. There are two approved conditional use permits and a parking adjustment related to the UBT Sports Complex at 210th in Cumberland. We've discussed this in detail with the board. I won't get into all those details uh, if you do have questions, let me know. Um, but the planning department recommends that the planning board move to schedule a show cause hearing on April 5th, 2023 at the regular planning board meeting. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Grossbacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pace? Yes. Orlando? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay, the two, first two agenda items are administrative only there will be no opportunity for public uh, input public testimony agenda item number one case c10-23-22 c12-23-23 applicant elkhorn public schools request final plat approval of ida point west a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from ag to r5 location northwest of 196th street and stone avenue and eric you're up yeah, so this is a final plat approval of Ida Point West. Um, this actual case has rushed through the entitlement process as the planning board did recommend approval of the preliminary plat back on February 1st. The city council did approve that plat at yesterday's meeting. The final plat submittal is compliant with um, all the regulations and master plan uh, requirements. There are a few minor changes that adjusted the outlot on the east side to shift the right away so it abuts the adjacent property, as well as providing a temporary cul-de-sac uh, for the turnaround. This will be an elementary school within the Elkhorn School District. Uh, one item to note is that this plat will not be able to be recorded until the Avante plat directly to the south has been recorded. So I just wanted to point that out. That was not in the report last month. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to R5, approval of the final plat subject to submittal of an acceptable subdivision agreement prior to city council. Any comments or questions? Do we have a motion? Move approval of the rezoning from AG to R5 and approval of the final plat subject to submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior to the board meeting of session on the city council. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pace? Yes. Orlando? Yes. Grossbacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved by the board. Agenda item number two, KC 10-21-209. C12-21-210, applicant Westwood Solutions, LLC. Request final plat approval of State and Highway 133 Edition, Lot 3, Outlot C, a subdivision outside city limits with approval of a rezoning from AG to GI. Location, northwest of State Street and Blair High Road. Eric? Yeah, so this final plat is the next phase uh, for this light industrial user northwest of Blair High Road and State Street. Uh, this was on planning board back in January for the preliminary plat and approved by city council February 7th. Uh, this phase incorporates the previously platted lot, so it includes one larger lot as well as one out lot. The phasing plan has been modified since the preliminary plat was before the board, uh, but is acceptable. There are just a few items that we'll continue to work with the development team on as far as coming to an acceptable final subdivision agreement before city council, which includes tree mitigation plans, as well as m several other documents. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to GI, a 
approval of the final plat subject to the three conditions in the report prior to city council. Any comments or questions? We have a motion. Conditions in the recommendation report prior to forwarding the city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Morris. Yes. Hayes. Yes. Orlando. Yes. Rosacker. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Moore. Yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. Agenda item number three, case C3-23-43, Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha, request approval of the 2023 Consolidated Action Plan. This was laid over from our February meeting. Location, City of Omaha in the Three Mile Extra Territorial Jurisdiction. And Kelly, you're up. Okay, let the record show that Sidney Franklin is leaving the chambers. Good afternoon, Kelly Johnston Dorsey with the Planning Department. Along with me are Alyssa Solachuk and Greg Paskech from the Planning Department as well. So with our 2023 annual action plan is about a little over 100 pages. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna cover some highlights in case, unless there are any questions. So the purpose of this annual action plan is to provide a concise summary of actions, activities, and specific federal and non-federal resources that will be used each year to address the priority needs and goals identified within our city's consolidated plan. Our most recently adopted consolidated plan spans fiscal years 2019 to 2023, and this is the fifth and final year of that consolidated plan. The three programs that are uh, was, receive funding under this plan are our Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG, Home Investment Partnership Program, and the Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG. Unfortunately, we received um, our final allocation on Monday and it has gone down from previous years and less than estimated. I will go over um, the different programs that we're recommending for here in a second. Generally, in terms of our process, it began over a year ago um, with an RFP for CDBG Home and ESG assistance was issued. We, re we received applications for the funding, reviewed those uh, and put together our slate of projects and programs identified for funding. A draft of that plan was made available on the city's website. And then in August, a public hearing um, was, was hosted by us and our public comment period started. It lasted for 30 days, 23 individuals and one organization provided comments. Like I said, Monday, we received our final allocation, so our final dollar amounts and we need to submit this action plan to HUD by April 27th. For CDBG funding, on the column on the left is the general goal, which this funding goes towards in our plan. In the middle column is a specific project and then the dollar amount on the right. The red text indicates a new project from 2022 and green text indicates that there is an increase from 2022 funding. Just the normal text uh, is no change from the prior year. So we are recommending fu funding for our Choice Neighborhood South project, Y Street Improvements Phase 2, which would construct Y Street where it does not currently exist. So this is a new, a new project. Previous year, we allocated funds for the engineering for this, for this phase. Um, our city-managed single-family rehabilitation programs, we have several of them. So exterior home re rehabilitation, accessibility, energy conservation, healthy homes, emergency repairs, and a senior home repair program. So we're increasing recommending increasing our funding for these programs. They are always in demand. We were just talking earlier about how our timelines are very, very wonky. We've actually allocated funding for the entire year already uh, for our exterior rehabilitation program. The program is just so much in, in demand and so much in need. With our other single family rehabilitation programs would be Roofs for Seniors, and that would be administered by Project Houseworks. Slum and Blight Elimination, we're uh, continuing funding for our demolition program and code enforcement. Financial and home education through Family Housing Advisory, Serv Advisory Services, and a job training and preparation program through Catholic Charities. It's a micro business and asset development program. It is new this year because it wasn't funded last year, but it's been funded years prior to that. There is a separate category uh, for our CDBG public services funding, which is called out specifically because we have a 15% cap of our overall allocation we can allocate to public services. These are all within the job training and preparation goal. 
And the specific projects are the Step Up Omaha Youth Employment Program with the Empowerment Network, Latino Center of the Midlands Workforce Education and Innovation Initiative, Way to Work with the Salvation Army, and the Nebraska Maintenance Academy. That one is the only new program, so that reflects new funding, and then decreased funding for the Step Up program. With our home program, we are looking at uh, recommending funding for the Choice Neighborhoods North t Target Area Housing. This would provide for new construction, uh, single family, as well as the Adams Park Scattered Site Housing. Our other family rehabilitation programs is through also Project Houseworks. It's an urban homestead program to do a complete uh, rehab of a home and then sell it. With multifamily housing new construction, there are two projects in Council Bluffs. It seems odd as though we're recommending funding for Council Bluffs, but we are in an overall consortium with them for the metropolitan area, which is the, the you know rationale for allocating funds to Council Bluffs. Our Choice Neighborhoods North, specifically for Kennedy Square West phase, and then our Choice Neighborhoods South, uh, this would be our first phase for Southside Terrace on-site phase one, uh, our first housing phase uh, related with that $50 million grant we recently received. We also have a rental rehabilitation program. We're recommending increased funding for that program and continuing funding for a tenant-based rental assistance program with the mm -hmm. Omaha Housing Authority. Our emergency solutions funding uh, focuses more on homelessness and homelessness services. Uh, there is a information management service uh, we recommend continuing funding for, and then emergency shelter, specifically with Catholic Charities, Santa Francis House, and St Stephen Center, and then rapid rehousing programs, partnership with Heartland Family Service and Together. Unfortunately, we see decreases in the column only because we are receiving less funding than we have previously. So in summary, we have a little over $6.9 million across these three programs, which will assist in the construction or rehabilitation of 1,116 housing units, over 6,000 persons and 35 businesses. So this annual action plan was guided by our consolidated plan as well as public input. And the final allocation amounts were again provided on Monday and our plan is due April 27th. And I will am available if there are any questions. I think you answered most of them upstairs. Oh, thank you. Any questions for Kelly? Thank you, Kelly. Thanks. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Eric. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, there's a there's several planners and individuals within our community development division that put in a lot of hard work and effort. Um, you know, that's the division that Kelly leads. So I just wanted to um, show appreciation to, you know, it's an ever changing target and new numbers that just come out a couple days ago from uh, the federal government. So uh, there are challenges, but these programs are all to great benefit. Staff recommends approval. Okay, we have a motion. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Yes. Mike, will you let Sydney know that nothing come back? Let the record show that Sydney Franklin has come back to the chambers. Agenda item number six, case C8-22-166, C10-22-169, applicant Lanahaw Nurseries, Inc. It was on for approval, it was taken off. Request rezoning from AG to DR with approval of a special use permit to allow agricultural sales and services in the DR district. Portions of the property are located within the flood fringe overlay district. This was laid over from our June 2022 meeting. Locations Northeast at 258 Plaza and West Center Road and Larry Europe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Larry Jovan, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of Lanaha Nurseries. Um, this, as you know, was on the agenda for approval on the consent agenda. Um, when I got down here, Bob Peterson was here and he asked me if we could uh, do something to the site plan and we can accommodate him. So I kind of want to show you that. And then, so this is the property outlined in black that's all. Uh, Lanahaw Nurseries property and 
Bob Peterson's client has this property right here, and apparently he trains Colts at that location. So if you looked at the site plan, this is going to be uh, wood waste recycling to, to essentially make mulch and also a soil improvement restoration operation. And so we had a building at this location and all of the uh, wood recycling and soil improvement restoration was going to occur at this location, but that's where uh, the gentleman trains his horses here. And Bob Peterson asked if we could simply flip the site, have the building move to the south and the operations move to the north. And we are completely fine with that. The property is a virtual rectangle that's completely flat. And uh, my understanding is then um, Mr. Peterson's client doesn't have any uh, opposition to this particular use. So with that, hopefully we can make a recommendation to approve of the project as flipped and it'll just mirror itself. But with that, I'll, I'll ask Bob Peterson if he has anything to add. Okay, hold on, Larry. Oh, sure. No, go ahead. You're done, but <laughs> oh. I was going to say, are there any other proponents oh. that wish to speak? Well, I guess maybe I should ask Bob, are you an opponent now or a proponent? <laughs> I don't know that I'm a proponent, but I'm not an opponent. So, okay. yeah, that that satisfies, uh, you know. Oh, Robert F. Peterson. I'm an attorney, 14747 California Street. And I represent uh, the property owner, Denny Lane, who's immediately to the west of the applicant's property. And Larry's uh, offered the accommodations that we were requesting. And with that, we don't have any opposition to it. All right, thank you, Bob. I guess since I called them an opponent, are there any other opponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments, questions from the board? I just have one comment. Larry, thank you for uh, working with Bob and getting it, this done so easily. Absolutely. It's not often that you have a perfectly rectangular site that's flat. <laughs> <laughs> so that works really That works really well, actually. Uh, so yeah, we have no problem with that. We thank you. It. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, so I don't um, need to get into several of the details of the site. Uh, there will be a certain distance off of West Center Road that will be paved as well as some of the parking areas. It's not a heavily staffed site, um, more so just trucks bringing material and then the occasional uh, grinding into that material into the mulch. I do want to point out the site is within, uh, is entirely within the flood fringe overlay district. And so there is a requirement to elevate the portion of the site or protect with berms for the materials on site that are um, dangerous and buoyant in the case of flooding events. So those materials would be trees, the larger trees and tree limbs. The products such as mulch and soil will not have to be elevated to that extent because if there was a flood event, um, you know, those floating away is not usually injurious to proper, other properties or um, humans nearby. But those larger tree limbs and uh, tree product would have to be elevated and have the necessary floodplain uh, development permit in place for those. So I did want to mention that. Um, staff is acceptable to uh, the changes that could occur with a revised site plan before proceeding to city council. I would recommend that we are going to, I'm going to change the wording on condition number three, which as it states right now, it's compliance with the submitted site plan. Um, so I will read the recommendation. Whoever makes the motion, if you are acceptable to that wording, you can always say as stated by the city in the recommendation rather than trying to repeat word for word. Okay. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to DR. Approval of the special use permit to allow agricultural sales and service in the DR district subject to the six conditions in the report with a modification to number three to state prior to forwarding to city council submittal of an updated site plan reflecting the changes discussed in the public hearing of the planning board. Okay, any comments or questions? Do we have a motion? Motion to approve rezoning from AG to DR. Approval of special use permit to allow agricultural sales and service in the DR district, subject to the six conditions report as modified verbally here in the chamber. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Obongo? Yes. Rosehacker? Yes. Mr. 
chair. Yes. Thanks. Agenda item number eight, case C7-15-153, applicant Lord of Life Lutheran Church, request approval of a major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow religious assembly in the R1 district. This was laid over from our July 2022 meeting, location 20844 Bonanza Boulevard. And may we hear from the applicant, please. Joe Katulak, architect with RDG Planning and Design, located at 1302 Howard Street. I couldn't hear your name. Joe Katulak. Okay, thanks, Joe. Yep. Uh, as part of the layover process, we were directed to have uh, additional communication with uh, homeowners in Skyline Ranches. We provided uh, two additional opportunities, uh, two open houses, one in July, a second in October. The July open house was attended by approximately 70 individuals, the October about 30. Uh, at that July meeting, we walked the property and kind of marked out where the potential expansions would occur uh, on the north side of the existing building and walked through the, the current facility, uh, showing some of the classrooms and some of the meeting spaces that are currently exist uh, on site. Uh, with that October meeting, it was really a follow-up to some additional questions that were posed after that July open house um, as just kind of additional discussion and dialogue with uh, about 30 individuals that were at that open house. Um, since that time, we've uh, uh, decided to not make any amendments to what we originally proposed in July, understanding that what we're uh, putting before you is a master plan and kind of the hopes and the dreams of the church and understand that there are uh, realities of today's uh, financing and um, just how the church grows uh, over the next several years um, that we wanted to understand what our maximum allowable would be. Uh, and given that that was um, recommended for approval at the last uh, July hearing, uh, we did not make any modifications, but understand that we will continue to communicate and work with the, the homeowners of Skyline Ranches uh, as we move forward with any potential project. Joe, when you shared that with the neighbors that you weren't going to make any changes, were there any comments about that? There were questions regarding uh, how we got to the initial size of, of the project that, that we were showing on site. Um, a lot of questions related to the amount and number of parking. Uh, currently, we, we show 131 parking stalls on site. Uh, we would be required, uh, given the size of the worship space, to only provide 100. Now, whether we provide 130 or 100 really has impacts on how much impervious coverage. There's also a dollar associated with every parking stall. So if we can provide more green space uh, and not have to park 130 um, you know, at, at the completion of, of the master plan, then that might be a route that we take. Uh, but at this point, we just want to understand what, our, our, what the maximum we could do on site is and then sort of peel back from there. Okay, but if the church uh, realizes some issues that the congregation members. Yes, they are. Maybe one of, I don't care which, which one might want to come up to address the question. But what kind of growth would you anticipate in, in the future as well? Are you talking 10% a year? Are you talking more? Do you know? We're going to need your name and address. To you. Pastor David Lynn Kugol. 20844 Bonanza Boulevard, Lord of Life Lutheran Church. It's really hard to quantify, especially coming out of COVID, where you know we have online worship as well as in-person worship. We had, I don't know, Pastor Kiel, you know, a number as far as percent growth. The last, last couple of years. The last five years, we've had about um, 33%, right? Yeah, about 33% so over the last five years. years. And, and so with the planned expansion that you have before us today, is that going to be adequate then, do you think, for anticipated future growth five years from now, 10 years from now? Yes, with, you know, again, multiple services using the space. And parking. And parking, yeah, as Jill addressed. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Are there any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Additional comments or questions? 
I just want to thank you for uh, taking the time to meet with the neighbors. It's sometimes a very important thing when things change in neighborhoods. Uh, nobody likes change, and uh, the more opportunities they have to ask questions and understand, it's always much easier. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah, so the only thing, uh, there are a few waivers that are associated with, um, is typically supported when we have civic uses within residential districts. So that includes the impervious coverage, especially with the underlying zoning, um, you know, being R1, those have very low numbers of building and impervious coverages, as well as very large setbacks. So the, the other waivers are related to setbacks, which is a, at a distance from what you would not typically see for any parking lot of any other church or school or, or operation. Um, so it's a, it's a unique, and for those reasons, we do support those waivers, um, which will need to be approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Staff recommends approval of the major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow religious assembly in the R1 district subject to the eight conditions in the report. Any additional comments, questions? Do we have a motion? Permit to allow religious assembly in the R1 district subject to the eight conditions. I have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. So Longo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Tate? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, case C7 00 250, C10 22 326. Applicant Rob Cooksey <clears throat> request approval of a major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow secondary education facilities in the R4 district along with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district. This was laid over from our December 2022 meeting. Location, 15656 Fort Street. May we hear from the applicant, please? Zach Fergus, Lamprey Nearson, 14710 10 West Dodge Road. Um, here on behalf of the applicant, Rob Cooksey, head of schools at Concordia and also Lee Hanke, uh, board chair. Uh, as you can see on the site plan here, uh, this is a project about uh, both renovating the interior of Concordia, as well as uh, expanding based on new enrollment and, and projected growth. So uh, school site, 37 acres situated on the northwest corner of 156 and Fort. Um, current enrollment, with Concordia, uh, 181 students K through five, 165 students six through eight, and also 306 students nine through 12. Um, this proposed expansion will incorporate two new uh, building entrances, one that you can see here on the Southwest, and then the K through five entrance on the Northwest of the existing building as it sits today. This expansion will incorporate uh, 150 to 200 new parking spaces. Again, just as was mentioned with the last case, dependent on uh, pricing and budgets uh, under the current, current price of concrete. Um, at the request of the city, uh, this site plan shows the closure of the current driveway on Fort Street and relocation to an existing driveway uh, that has been paved as a part of the 158th Avenue uh, right away. So we will be tying in our main drive into the school site further west. This aligns with the city's desire to have only quarter mile accesses. This closed that, closes that driveway, which was an eighth mile. Um, we did, we appreciate the layover in December. It allowed us to meet with uh, neighbors on January 26th. Uh, fielded many questions, a lot of it uh, focused around that driveway closure. Um, we have performed a traffic study and that has been provided to Public Works that is currently in review. Uh, that'll go final once we receive comments back on that. Um, so, yep. So during the meeting you said most of the conversation was around that other access point. But yes. Because of the stacking, was that a concern that they were raising or what were the what were the questions that they were general traffic concerns as as we see with most uh most projects adjacent to residential um oh, so it, general draft general traffic in that uh, general yes area. yes not necessarily directed towards any flaws in the we 
uh, by moving the the drive closer to the neighborhood that of course was a concern with the neighbors um, based on the layout of the street network around us and again needing to comply with that quarter mile access we, we don't have a lot of give on where we can tie in uh, to a public public road yeah. for the school yeah. um, it is a school it's got pickup it's got drop off it's it is busy uh, we are able to accommodate a lot of our stacking internally we have two parent drop-offs uh, one on the north and one on the south and then a, a, a pretty healthy queue length internal to the site which I was going to comment this side plan right there's more there's more internal queue there than probably any school I've ever seen yes so yes. that should be a, a good thing for the neighbor there's something 650 and growing and growing <laughs> okay thank anything you. else rob i mean zach no i'm sorry okay thank you thank you any other proponents wishing to speak good afternoon thank you my name is rob cooksey 14714 crown point avenue i am the head of schools at concordia i'm here as a proponent and i'm here just to answer any questions that you might have today thank you Thank you, Rob. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lee Hanke, 5603 North 160th Avenue. I'm uh, the current board chair for Concordia Lutheran Schools of Omaha. Here to voice my support for the project and answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Okay, come on down. Make sure you give your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Molly Mazur, and I am representing myself as an adjacent homeowner at 5505 North 160th Avenue. And this is my first time, so please be gentle. <laughs> I'm nice, but the rest of them are pretty Yeah, pretty there's mean. one over there. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, no, first I'd honestly like to thank Zach. Zach and I have been in correspondence uh, since I learned of this project in November, and he has provided a lot of information uh, and been uh, very helpful. Uh, unfortunately, the information he shared has done nothing to quell my concerns. Um, I guess based on this map, I am located right here. Um, I'm going to share this other one because I think it is more helpful. So, uh, existing entrance off Fort Street will be closed. All traffic, based on my understanding, will be redirected to a uh, new driveway. I know that they just have the driveways there. It's more of a, a tiny concrete apron right here. And this is my house right here. So arguably the most impacted homeowner in the neighborhood as um, there will be a new entrance 30 feet from my backyard. Um, my house sits far back on the site and unfortunately will be very close to that entrance. Here's the existing apron. The road will be extended beyond the apron and that white house is my house. So, um, so I have some concerns. Um, initially in the, well, in every mailing from the city, the fact that the Fort Street entrance will be closed was never addressed. Um, at the planning meeting that uh, Zach referenced that I attended, that was new information to almost everyone attending and of great concern because we are you know, taking a tiny street that already gets backed up all the time and relocating uh, 700 students plus staff um, going through this, this small area every day. And um, I've been anxious to see the results of the traffic study. Uh, I understand that those are not public yet, um, but I'm concerned because my understanding it was conducted uh, in a January day, and this is Stone Creek. Uh, Stone Creek is open March through November and uh, has approximately 2,000 people visiting a day. And so I don't see how a traffic study done in January uh, accurately reflects what the traffic pattern of this neighborhood really is most of the year. Um, I did contact Stone Creek. Um, they had concerns, they were unaware of this. I did contact our HOA. They were concerned and did not, were not aware of the closure. And I did contact the SID and they were also unaware of the closure. And I, I think, met with Mr. Fergus yesterday. What effect is 
um, with the increased traffic that will be, and not knowing what the proposal is, if there will be a light on Fort Street, if there will be kind of how this will be handled. Um, I think scale is hard to see here, but it really is a tiny two lane road. Um, and I can see with you know 700 people arriving twice a day. Um, I think it's also important to note that this is not only a school, it's a church. So this isn't a you know burden at eight o'clock and three o'clock. This is seven days a week. Um, I applaud Concordia and they have a, a very active student body, but people are coming and going all the time. And currently uh, on football days, people park in this little apron area right here and um, often venture into my backyard, often throw their trash can or uh, bottles and cans down onto our patio. Um, we asked Concordia what you know attempts that they're going to make at um, keeping this area clean, if, they're, if they would be willing to do any sort of uh, landscaping around here to add trees to kind of uh, mitigate light and noise pollution. Um, as far as I know, they've been unwilling to do anything like that. I've talked with several real estate agents. All have noted that there will be a significant diminution in my property value due to uh, this influx of traffic and this um, new road. Um, ultimately, I'm all for development. I'm excited about their project. I am just not excited about it um, abutting my backyard. And I think my final point is I know that this is a city requirement, and I understand the quarter of a mile drive uh, requirement. What I don't understand is why the same requirements not being enforced for this entrance. Uh, this is also less than a quarter of a mile off a street. This is 156th Street right here. Um, it's one way, both ways. There's no turning lane. And my understanding is the city is willing to grandfather this entrance in, but not the main entrance that arguably has a turn lane. Um, and you know, similarly doesn't meet the quarter of a mile requirement. But cities require enclosure of this and creation of this entrance, but nothing here when um, arguably they both violate city code equally. Or recommendations, I guess. I don't know if it's code or a recommendation. Can I ask you a question about that? Yes. So you've been, how long have you lived here in the town? Um, about six years. So you have seen school traffic, obviously, over that time, right? Um, I do. Okay. I mean, it's not through our neighborhood, but. Right, right. But, but along Fort Street, have you ever seen any cars backed up onto Fort Street during pickup and drop off times? Not along Fort Street. Um, I do know that there is a challenge turning left out of there. And so a lot of times people will um, turn right out of the school going um, down for it, and then they'll turn left to go through um, a kind of a townhome neighborhood. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I'm fairly familiar with schools and school flows and, and what have you and, and traffic patterns. And actually, the way it's proposed is a much better traffic flow for those along Fort Street, particularly, because I live close to Keywit Middle School. 156th Street is a parking lot, right? Sure. Because it's only two lanes right now. At school yeah. drop-off yeah. time. No, that's absolutely, time, right? like I said. And that's a concern as this school continues to grow that I have with regards to Fort Street. So moving that actually, I think, improves the traffic flow quite a bit. It will in the future. And the other thing, too, is is you said that people are parking in that apron right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's, there, that's designed there for a reason. That's an extension to what was anticipated to be an additional uh, traffic lanes, traffic lanes leading into something because of the school there. So that was going to happen eventually anyway. And, and now you're not going to have any parking there because there will be a free flow of traffic. Yeah, now there will just be um, just a traffic, few thousand right? cars a day going through that. And then so. the other question is, do you know how many people that live in your general neighborhood, in your vicinity there, attend? Uh, how many kids attend that school? I believe that people directly um, across 158th Street attend. Uh, which actually they might be too young, so they may be attending the elementary school. But um, and, and where I'm going with that is, sure. is, is, are there how many of, of 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 the kids that attend that school actually live in that neighborhood, or are they being transported from other areas of the city? I I don't have that information. I think that would probably and be that's, something. And that gets to some of the traffic concerns that you might have with regards to traffic going through the neighborhood as well. Is I think the only people that will go through your neighborhood from the school will be those that live in that neighborhood. I I guess I. 
I disagree. I consider entering in the Stone Creek entrances right here, entering into the neighborhood. So. You mean to pick to pick up those kids, or drop them off? I mean, to me, this is the neighborhood. This right. is well, the entrance now, into Stone Creek. Right. You have no. the street. Oh, I mean, we have people going to their homes or going yeah. to the golf course, but we don't have people going to the school. Right. Um, because okay. there's not currently right. access. That's all right. Thank you. Um, and then. Has the board seen the traffic study and any recommendations? We're going to bring Ryan Haas down with Public Works in a, in a little bit. Okay. I've talked with Ryan as well. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Any other opponents? I'm, I'm with her. Okay. <laughs> We've got another opponent coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm another resident um, of Stone Creek. I live right down the street <laughs> in the circle. Um, my name is Milana Reese, and I live at 5408 North 160th Avenue Circle. Um, we are also, myself. that exits that school. I just heard your mic come up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, a significant amount of traffic that exits that Fort Street exit um, currently, and Fort Street is a major road that is built and made to support that. Um, just in response to your comments around the flow of traffic, um, we live in that circle that, and I'm sorry, I don't have the map, map here, but when you exit directly into, thank you, um, into the neighborhood over here, there's a circle that mm -hmm. comes down this direction. We already face a significant amount of traffic from people just not knowing where they're going. So they circle around the circle. And it is our belief that if there's exits here, in order for people to avoid the backup that's going to be created along this road here, they are going to start going into our neighborhood and using that small street area, not going down the big street area, in order to get onto Fort Street. Um, there are not traffic controls except for a stop sign at this point right here, which I would make the assumption that there would be a stop sign at the exit point here. Um, but there are no additional traffic controls to help mitigate or control the flow of traffic. And uncontrolled traffic is going to end up turning into chaos for us homeowners who live in this immediate area um, that would be near where the exit is being moved. Um, we already face a lot of issues with regards to events that are held at the school after hours. Um, so fall sporting events, um, football, soccer, things like that, in which we have a lot of um, people who are attending those parking off of the school property onto Stone Creek easements, and it creates a safety liability when people are crossing back and forth on that street. There's no lighting on the street to help support. Um, yes, there's lighting on the football field, on the soccer field, but there's nothing there to help support additional safety that's needed um, when you have that type of traffic moving in that area. And then to change that, this area into an actual street that would flow traffic outwards, um, we're extremely concerned with that, that taking place. But um, I'm sorry, what, you think the traffic from the, from the schools will, will be going into your neighborhood, or do you think it's people from your own neighborhood that are gonna be using that to get to their homes? I, I'm, I'm It'll a be a com combination of both, but what I am concerned about is not the people in the neighborhood, I'm concerned about this traffic from the school. Um, a lot of the kids within the neighborhood go to schools across the city, um, whether it be OPS, Concordia, um, Elkhorn, Millard. They, the kids go to a wide variety of schools. Um, the traffic of the neighborhood is not really our concern. That's not what's you know bring, being brought forth right now. Okay. It's the traffic directly related to the school. So 
so why I'm, I'm and I'm I'm just listening. Nope. I'm trying to try to understand. Absolutely. Why why would uh, uh, somebody coming down uh, for it and take a right instead of into that original entrance, take a right and go down that street and then go into your neighborhood rather than just to loop back into the school and go into the parking lot? I, uh, because there are other extra exit points through the neighborhood if you drive through the neighborhood. So where would they go? And like, expanded. So, so I know they might where. either come around the circle to kind of loop through and circumvent waiting in line. They might take a right. And go down. I don't to think the they'd next. be able to circumvent going in line because then you're going to make a left and you're already you're already in line. You could so. potentially go back out to the traffic, or there might be parking there. I'm I'm not sure, but if you come into the neighborhood and you take a right, mm -hmm. there are exit points further down Fort. Mm -hmm. um, there are exit points further down 156th, which I don't believe those are not represented on the map. But there are other exit points from Stone Creek and the housing the residential area so you, that's you back think here. more so when they leave school or events when not, they leave not really when they're coming in because they're just going to the school right when okay. they come in i'm not foreseeing much concern there right. it's just when they're well when they come to the school they have to exit the school if you're doing drop off you essentially are dropping your kid off and you're moving on okay so anytime live on is a parking lot at three o'clock in the afternoon right every day right it's a residential street people come to pick up their kids that's where they park they walk from Kiwit, drop the ki uh, get their kids and leave right but five minutes I that's all the, it is i think the distinctive thing about this compared to so many other places and compared to the plan as it exists right now you've probably got six times as many uh spaces along the that new road that they're putting in for the uh, traffic to to move and get out of Fort Street. Right now, it's a hazard. It, it shouldn't be there. There should never be any stacking on Fort Street. That street's never going to do anything but get more busy. And so ultimately, that's going to be closed no matter what. And so this is this is a way to move it. Like most schools, it's out of a neighborhood. It's not out of a main thoroughfare. But what you have here is so much more distance in there to handle that traffic compared to any place else I think I've ever seen. I don't know how many schools you've looked at in Millard, but a lot, a lot of them, and, and they all have some same problems, right? They all do. They all do. But this, this should be, I would say, of all the ones I've seen, probably the least problem for the neighborhood that I've ever seen. And I can appreciate that, but as a homeowner, that reality doesn't, you know, always translate through to us. Yeah. Well, Does the city? Kind of, if I can give you any kind of, of assurance, my property taxes, my property value went up about fifteen percent this year. <laughs> Even though that we know that uh, it's a parking lot at, th at three o'clock in the afternoon, so I don't think it's going to have any impact. In fact, it shouldn't have any impact on your property values. Uh, so I don't think that that uh, that is anything to worry about. Well, um, does the city have any planning towards traffic controls around this area? Then, with it moving off of that main we'll fort, bring, yeah, we'll bring Ryan. We're going to bring, we'll bring him okay. Okay. So that'll be addressed during that. Yeah. Okay. Um, it does not. You know what I've heard so far does not ease any of the concerns we have around it. Sure. Um, we're still definitely opposed um, to that exit point being moved there. We'd like to see some additional consideration. Um, and I guess the other question, will this, will the, will Ryan be able to also identify what's going to take place here? Or is there ever going to be a change with what happens on 156th Street? Yeah, they'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think hearing that information would be helpful. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you. Any other opponents? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, do we want to have Ryan come down first or have Ryan, would you come on down? Ryan, could you hear all the concerns? Yes. Okay. Will you address those now? Yeah, Ryan Haas with the Public Works Department. So first of all, with regards to the traffic study, it's staff recommendation that the applicant provide for all improvements identified in the final approved traffic study. So we did receive that late last week. It does take some time to for um, the various staff members to review that. So we have a way of um, conditionally approving uh, if the board sees fit to approve today with that condition where um, we can place a CO hold on the back end to ensure that any improvements that end up being identified in the traffic study are provided for by the applicant. So the th kind of things that, that make 
uh, result from the traffic study recommendations, things like the extension of turn lanes, um, try to point here on the exhibit, things like the extension of turn lanes on the approach here to Fort Street, potentially extension of turn lanes on Fort Street itself. Um, it'll look at whether or not traffic signals are warranted at this intersection here at 158th Avenue, excuse me, in Fort. Um, so that, uh, I, you know, is certainly a concern of staff as well as is what happens to the change uh, resulting from the relocated access as well as the expansion in the school and the increased number of trips that we would expect to see. With respect to uh, the question, it is a good question, um, 156th Street. So um, just taking a step back, the site as it exists today has a direct access to 150, 156th Street here and down here on Fort. Um, that is a kind of a grandfathered existing condition that predates the city's current policies and standards with respect to site access. If, if this had come in today, we would not have allowed any driveways to either of those two streets, but they do exist. And so um, we wanted to take the opportunity to try to Im improve uh, the on-site stacking, which you guys discussed uh, in, during the testimony. Um, we wanted to try to remove at least the, one of the accesses, and it was deemed because of the proximity to the front door, there's more benefit to removing the Fort Street access. And we really were responding to the site improvements. And if I don't have an exhibit that shows the overall site, but this is roughly what you see on the screen there is the southern half of the site. They're not doing anything on the northern half of the site. It's not inconceivable in the future if they come back and bring a significant expansion into that part of the site. At that time, I, I would speculate that it would be a condition of approval that uh, we revisit the 150, 156th Street driveway at that time, maybe remove it at that time and, and take it up there to the north where there's a public street at the northeast corner of the site. Um, that being said, we are uh, recommending that they construct sidewalks along their 156th Street frontage. That's something that, that did not take place um, with the original approval of the site. So that'll get at least um, the pedestrian uh, environment improved along 156th Street. Uh, the other question relating to that access there, again, going back over here to 156th Street, what happens to that long term? Absent any project, like I said, that may come in on the north, that access will remain in place for the time being. Upon future improvements to 156th Street, a median will be placed, um, restricting that to a right in, right out only access. So for right now, it's, it's not ideal that there's no turn lane there. Um, we do have a project in city code uh, identified an ASIP, it's called ASIP, Arterial Street Improvement Program. Um, we have one project first on Q Street, 192nd to 204th. That's currently under design and, and we have approximately 10 million in the fund right now. So we're getting close to where we'll be able to construct the Q Street project. The next project in city code after Q Street is 156th between West Maple and Ford. So there will be some improvements here in the, in the foreseeable future. It's, I, I don't have a, a firm date, but it could be as soon as 2028, somewhere in that range where we're out there able to be um, widening 156th Street. And that's the time where we would then identify how far the median would extend here um, in both directions. So I, I didn't catch that it was ever mentioned um, during the testimony, but just to point out, if we weren't relocating the driveway over here to give uh, access to 158th Avenue, then upon the future improvements to the intersection here, both of them would be restricted to right in, right out only. There would be no full movement access essentially to the school. And I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. So um, we understand the concerns of the neighbors that we, we have to balance everything. And ultimately this, this does come down to safety um, along Fort Street where we have the highest speeds and volumes. Um, this is not 100% in compliance with current standards, but it gets it a lot closer. I, we feel it provides benefit to the school. A lot of times when we talk to principals, they, they appreciate having more control, more room within their site to control things, you know. And certainly, that, like you mentioned, there is a lot of more, a lot more stacking uh, offered by the proposed site. So, um, with that, I'll I'll pause there. Are there any other follow? Can I just remind you? Like, sure. Does it extend lane of traffic east? Um, I'm sorry, north and south, two lanes. It's it's two lane until you get down towards um, Fort Street. Yes. Brian, there was a comment about the traffic study. Um, not accurately reflecting uh, the golf course. Now, I know there's not an entrance to the golf course off of Fort Street besides the maintenance drive, which I would expect is very um, rare as far as traffic from that. Can you comment on that? Does the traffic study 
you know, does it consider, you know, the intersection, the site, yeah. what it looks at? We could do a couple things to look at that, and, we, and I appreciate that feedback. We can look at historic counts. Um, I don't know if we have one or not um, currently at 158th Avenue and Fort, but we do certainly at 156th and Fort. So we can compare historic counts, maybe see if there's seasonal variation, and, and there's ways if we do identify that that we could assume a growth and just add those trips and have them reanalyze the intersection. Brian, um, that Stubb Street, where the two families both talked about where it's going into the neighborhood, it's always been a Stubb Street, always meant to connect up to a street. Would you talk about designing a city and connectivity of streets and why, why we have those? Are you talking about the yes. uh, driveway approach here? Yes. Well, that's more of a, a design feature that I, seems pretty clear is contemplated as site access back when they constructed the street. I, you know, I don't know that why they would put an approach there if it wasn't anticipated to ultimately be tied into. So um, I don't have the case file or, or documentation of what happened when this was originally approved. I don't know if there's a, a plan for future expansion that included access there, but um, we always have to respond to projects and try our best as staff to recommend things that bring them up to compliance or as close as we can to compliance with the master plan and the city code. Um, development is slow. It happens slowly over time. People get used to conditions that are intended to be temporary conditions, even if temporary ends up being years or decades. Um, there's, a, there's only certain limited things the city can proactively go out and enforce and do and change. Um, and so for that reason, it's important when we do have the opportunity as projects are submitted to the city for review that we do our best to bring them up to comply with uh, the codes and the master plan. You're saying that that's not technically a step two the master plan? There's similarity. I mean, some, at some point in the past, someone planned on an access there, and we're just kind of carrying that out now, yeah. Well, and I think it, you know, just to jump in here, you know, the idea of the master plan having three through routes at the quarter mile half mile and three quarter mile um, it's a little unique here in this site because of the golf course but um, you know past efforts still do have the two connections to Ford at basically the quarter and the half mile um, you know and it does their best attempts like I said it is challenging when you have golf courses but um, you know I think some of the questions relate to that and overall connectivity with neighborhoods and tying into those um, you know, what we do a better job of limiting those access points to those higher speed arterials. And, um, you know, there are certain neighborhoods, there was one that came up, that case was laid over, you know, Harvey Oaks neighborhood that was adjacent to a project. And if you look at the aerial, there's 60 cul-de-sacs perhaps. And um, it's just a very inefficient model as far as street maintenance, as far as connectivity. Um, we definitely don't do that. Now there's a cul-de-sac here, uh, you know, in the neighborhood and, you know, there are definitely occasions of cul-de-sacs, but as we've developed and, you know, in the last 15, 20, 25 years, we've done a better job of making sure those connections from neighborhoods and, um, you know, adjacent sites, whether it's a commercial property or in this case, it's a school. So I just wanted to add that. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, from the applicant, was it Zach? Yep. Did you want to come up and add anything? I think somebody was talking about maybe some landscaping, a buffer over in that area that we were just talking about that connects up to the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, that is something that we can look at. Um, we will want to be cognizant that that is a turning movement and we want to maintain visibility mm -hmm. uh, in and out. Uh, and so we can we can take a look at, at, at what are the possibilities are there. Um, I, I guess two other quick points too is, is one, we are offering internal sidewalks as well to the school, uh, connecting over to the neighborhood. Again, that connectivity uh, for the students and anybody walking from the adjacent neighborhood. Uh, and also we are providing additional parking internal to the site. And so when we're talking about game days and athletic events, we're, we are, trying to pull more of those cars into the site itself again with adequate queuing, adequate space to park so that we hopefully mitigate some of the concerns uh, of people parking on that drive. What will be the parking So one of the comments we received was uh, there's an existing gravel lot to the north here 
and so we'll look at paving that. Um, we will be between 300 and 400 spaces, again, dependent on um, how our final numbers come out, uh, but we will exceed what we are required to have uh, based on the number of uh, 11th and 12th graders and full-time staff. Do all your classes begin and, and end at the same time? Uh, no, sir. We'll be going to a staggered your start. Name and, name and address. Uh, Robert Cooksey, 14714 Crown Point Avenue. Okay. Um, we will go to a staggered start and dismissal next year. We'll be at a 10 minute stagger for grades K to 5, 10 minutes later for grades 6 to 8, 10 minutes later for grade 9 to 12, both at the beginning of the day and the end of the day to try and benefit the Orange, excuse me, the traffic flow uh, coming in and out of uh, the school lot. Okay. We've already notified parents of that. And Mr. Cooksey, and one thing we haven't talked about is maybe the school's own policy about how traffic is regulated and the instructions they're going to give families and students. Mm -hmm. It might give some advantage <clears throat> to the neighbors if they understand a little bit about that mentality, that internal policy as well. Right. Um, so we know that um, our grades K to 5 will be picked up on the north side of the building at the new academy entrance so none of those students are driving. There will be parking out back for the youngest kids who have to be strapped uh, into a car seat to, to go legally. So that will happen there but the natural traffic flow is to go out and exit right on 156th Street not to turn back around and go out. I can't say nobody will ever do that but we're creating a natural flow and we have staff out there at the end of the day uh, to assist with that. Um, so that's it. That would be at the end of the day, say at three o'clock. At three ten, everything moves to the uh, other parking lot. Our junior high and then our senior high at three ten and three twenty will be picked up at the end of the day on the south side of the building, and then they would have to use the new road that's going in, which is essentially three lanes ride wide running north to south, uh, and then they would have an option at the roundabout to either exit to the right to 156th Street or to exit to the left to 158th. How we, uh, how we talk to parents about that probably depends on what we learn about the 158th Street area. If it would happen to have a light at it, it becomes a much more a, a attractive and usable spot for students to exit at from a safety perspective. Um, but again, they have the option to go out the 156th Street side. So we'll wait for a little more information before we get specific uh, with that. But it's reasonable that neighbors' concerns will be taken into account when formulating that internal policy. We, 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 un, we understand. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, close the public hearing. Any additional comments or questions? Eric. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, point out a couple items. Um, you know, whether it was Zach or Ryan I discussed new sidewalks and connectivity. One of the recommendations to make sure that the new access drive does have a sidewalk um, from 158th Avenue into the site. There will need com uh, confirmation regarding the wall material compliance with the MCC overlay uh, district. So. You know, this is a major amendment to the conditional use permit, so the planning board does have the ultimate authority on the conditional use permit and the site plan you see, but the, the MCC overlay, which is only um, a benefit to the neighborhood and neighbors, um, you know, that will precede the city council, just that specific item. Um, but what that does is, as you know, it brings into a higher design requirement as far as building materials, increased landscaping, um, and the such. There are a few landscaping items that will need to be finalized and updated with the uh, landscaping plan. You know, Zach had mentioned that they can look at um, additional landscaping perhaps west of that new access drive um, to help um, buffer, I guess, some of those adjacent single family properties. Um, the code uh, due to the residential zoning does not require a specific buffer yard. If the board felt inclined to, you know, a requirement you have that right but um, yeah Zach is correct we want to make sure that the um, site triangles and access that that's not posing a danger 
there is a code requirement that would require uh, screening, whether that's in the form of uh, low shrubs or potentially fencing so that headlights, if you're leaving the site, you know, and you're traveling west on that new access drive, so, so headlights potentially shining into the neighborhood, those are shielded with screening. Now, that can also be met by um, grades potentially, and I, I see that the site does uh, slope from the school site up to the neighborhood, so we'll have to analyze whether, um, you know, the, the, the grade changes that are present and that'll be there with that new access drive or if there is specific screening that is required. So I just wanted to point a few of those items out. Zach did mention the gravel area that um, will need to be either paved and brought into compliance for a parking lot um, or removed and replaced with sod or other landscaping. So unless you have any specific questions, I don't think I have anything else. I'll read the recommendation, but you can definitely keep the conversation going if you see fit. Approval of the MCC overlay district approval of the major amendment to the conditional use, use permit to allow secondary education facilities in the R4 district subject to the 10 conditions in the report. Any additional comments? Do we have a motion? Motion to approval for copy the MCC overlay district and approval of the major amendment to the conditional use permit to allow secondary education facilities in the R4 district subject to the 10 conditions outlined in the recommendation. Report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Yes. 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 Thank you all for coming down. <clears throat> Agenda item number 10, KC 3-23-46, Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha, request approval of the <coughs> Leavenworth Lofts TIF Redevelopment Project Plan, location 3612 Leavenworth Street, Don, you usually don't have to wait this long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually. And that's all right. This has been interesting. Mm -hmm. I can have the map up, please. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Leavenworth Lost TIF project. It's located at. Um, Do we have. I, I can't hear his microphone. Are we working? Yeah, is, it, is it working? Better now? Is it? Okay. Okay. Let me just adjust a little bit, maybe. Right. Okay, uh, project site is located at 3612 Leavenworth. It's the, uh, immediately adjacent to large Conrad Apartments development. Um, this will be a new construction project of a four-story apartment building with 24 units. Be three levels of apartments on top of one level of parking. Uh, 24 units total, about half of those will be market rate, long-term you know, monthly rentals. Uh, the other half will be VRBO rental units, basically kind of a short-term overnight type of rental arrangement. Um, parking, the structure will have parking on the main level inside the building with 18 stalls. The access uh, to the site is off the back from the north from an alley. There'll be some alley improvements. Uh, this project is in the urban core mobility plan area, so there will be a contribution of TIF proceeds into the uh, streetcar system. The developer is 3612 Leavenworth LLC, managed by Charlie Sullivan. The total project investment in the neighborhood is about $7.6 million. They're asking for $908,000 in TIF support. Uh, this project uh, meets the required criteria of the TIF program. It's been approved by the TIF committee. It's an appropriate land use for the area. It complies with the city's um, city master plan goals. We ask for your approval. Thank you, Don. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Good afternoon, Mr. President, board members. Bob Griffith, 11440 West Center Road, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, Charlie Sullivan is also here today in support of this project. Um, first off, I want to thank Don uh, for his help and guiding this application through. He's been always been great to work with, so I appreciate him. Uh, in his presentation today. Um, I would add only um, that with, he mentioned VRBO um, with the Med Center's proximity. Um, that's, a, I think, a very viable option for half of those units with re traveling nurses or those visiting um, those in the hospital, as well as um, the option for, say, Berkshire Hathaway or other events in the city of Omaha. Um, it's a good use, I think, of, of part of that um, 
those units. Uh, it's a tight little spot. I think this is a really good use of the current um, space. Um, Charlie was able to meet with the Blackstone Neighborhood Association and have a separate neighborhood meeting prior. Um, only received positive comments is my understanding. So um, with that, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. 24 units, uh, where, where will other people park or do you foresee this as uh, you know, people not having cars? Or I think there'll be a portion of that certainly in that area. Um, I know there might be, I'm not sure if there's street parking along that, but I think moving forward, um, at least with some of the units being temporary, not continuously rented, I think that that, that number is adequate to support those units um, in our eyes. Do the VRBO tenants, do they, would they get access to parking if they needed it? Charlie, do you want to answer I think that? I'll Charlie come up and maybe answer that. Actually. Okay. How many can name an address, Charlie? Charlie Sullivan, 11, <coughs> excuse me, 11516 Mercury Hills Drive. Sorry, I got a little cold today. What was the question again? I'm sorry. Do the, the VRBO tenants, I think there's six total units that would be rented out for VRBO. Do, do those so. residents get access to parking if, if there's they needed par it? If there's parking available, so we've got 18, actually, actually 19 now, but <clears throat> they've got 19 stalls and 24 units. So, uh, and other 24 are going to do 12 and 12. So 12 VBR, VRBO and 12 long-term rentals. So certainly of the 19, if 12 are taken, they're all one bedroom apartments, so we can just pay one stall. So the extra uh, stalls from 12 up to 19, seven would be available to VRBO to answer your question, long way to link yeah. yeah. And parking is a garage parking, is that right? Yes, yeah. controlled access from the alley. And it's currently on the way to council for the PRD Dome, is that correct? Correct. So theoretically, the parking could be for what, potentially, with the TOD area? Yeah, so with the uh, TOD 2 rezoning, um, that brings into a 50% parking requirement. Whenever you have apartments, there's a different ratio, whether it's efficiency, one bedroom, two bedroom. Um, I don't remember offhand what the required number is, but yes, you need to meet 50% of that with, with the TOD zoning. And there was no PUR for this project, so it was all compliant with TOD codes. As far as the first initial preliminary glance, of course, we'll have to review it during uh, building permit time. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, close public hearing. Eric? Staff recommends approval. Do we have a motion? <coughs> Deb, we have a motion. Will you please record the vote? Yes. 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 I think we're at agenda item number 20. Is that correct? Agenda item number 20, case C11 21 313, C10 21 228. Applicant Uptown Properties LLC request rezoning from R6 and R7 to R7 with approval of a major amendment to the Plan Unit Redevelopment Overlay District. Location southeast of 31st and Marcy Streets. May I hear from the applicant, please? Kyle Hazi uh, with the NA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road, representing the applicant, along with myself, uh, Mike Carter, uh, the developer's attorney, um, is in the audience as well to answer any questions. Uh, the question, uh, the property that we are uh, discussing today is located here on the southeast corner of 31st and Marcy. Um, this is Mason uh, Street down to the south. And to give a little more uh, context to the area, uh, Leavenworth Street is located just here at a half block um, to the north. Um, what we are, to get a little, a little background um, on this site, uh, I believe you guys have, have seen this project before. Um, about a, two years ago, we started working with uh, planning staff, and we were looking at the project as a whole, as shown here. Um, in discussions um, with planning staff, uh, we were working through some different concepts. Um, in the end, we ended up um, this project to the south. Um, it was a PUR, uh, R7 project, that was approved um, by planning board in uh, December of 2021 and then approved by city council in March uh, of last year. Um, we are combining, our request is to um, 
revise that PUR to include this area to the, to the north again. Um, the area to the south that was previously approved um, has not been changed. Um, we did have a neighborhood meeting on this project on February 21st. Um, we had about six people uh, in attendance. Um, there were generally um, no um, anybody in opposition of the project, um, just generally trying to figure out uh, and become, self, uh, become informed of what the project all entailed. The first project to the south that was previously approved, um, this is the elevation. Uh, this elevation is not a, not changed. Uh, we have a three-story component on the west end of the project and then underground parking and then a four-story component um, for the rest of the project. And there's some undulation to the, to the front of that building um, to bring it um, some different uh, shadows and effect to the, to the neighborhood so it's not one big wall. Um, on the north side, we have the secondary project. So the, the building to the north um, has a total of uh, 80 units, and then there's a project to the north, um, I'm sorry, the project to the south has 88 units. The building to the north um, has 108, and that's a mix of uh, studio apartments, um, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms. Um, we have on-street parking along the streets. We have some interior surface parking in the middle, and then we have the majority of the parking stalls. There's 107 uh, below grade uh, parking stalls. Uh, that building to the north um, is a mix of, there's three-story component on the west side of the property. Uh, this will, ha will house the uh, apartment clubhouse. Then there's the underground parking, which draws this, this particular area to about a, a five-story unit. Um, but then as the grade goes up, uh, the building then goes to a uh, four-story component. Uh, this area of the, of the building is a courtyard, uh, which matches um, some traditional uh, multifamily story, uh, multifamily uh, projects um, in the area. As you can see here, that's that cutout, um, providing some change to the front of that building and pro providing a, a landscape area um, for the residents as well. There's a total of uh, 188 units, um, as I uh, described earlier. Um, with that, I'll make myself available for any questions you may have. Yes. Yep. How many on parking spots are there? There's a total of 147, of 107 of those being below grade. 107 below grade, so on site, 147 total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in a report, that represents about 52%, I believe, Correct. right? Um, with the relation to the TOD district, um, as which is here on Clevenster uh, Street, as um, was relevant to the case before that um, Eric had uh, mentioned, uh, that's the 50% um, parking ratio is what is usually required. And then with the streetcar project, um, that is about 0.4 uh, miles to the north of the site as well. Um, so if you're at max capacity, <laughs> assuming 85%, 90% had vehicles, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's going to be accurate or no, not. I don't know that. I don't know. Um, where were the rest of the tenants parked? There is um, some additional uh, street parking uh, within the neighborhood, and then we are also providing 40 um, bike lockers within the parking garage as well. 40, I'm sorry. 40 40. Uh, bike lockers within the parking uh, garage as well. Did you say that parking is first come, first serve? Um, I do not believe, I don't know if they're gonna assign they, parking. No, they, no they, we're not, uh, they, no, we first come, first serve. First come, they're not first assigning first. parking spots. No, we're not assigning parking spots. We won't, it's not an additional fee for parking. Unless you want to park in the garage. Unless What's you want to park in the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the garage That's I also believe will be, will be, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, we've got to keep both. Uh, Michael Carter, 11506 Nicholas Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68154, on behalf of the developer. Can you talk a little bit about the parking arrangement? Is it going to be first come, first serve on the surface plot? So, yeah. For the garage? Is that yeah, the garage, I believe they will have an additional fee, which would be pretty standard in the industry. $12. What? 
reserved? Yes, yeah. yes. And, and then the, uh, the surface parking would be just first come, first serve. And then our the, only. Um, and the additional parking is basically people have to just find it on the lease. Yes. And yes. And again, as Kyle said, um, the developer firmly believes that uh, when they talk about the 40, um, you know, bicycle lockers, those are like full lockers. I mean, it's not bike racks. It is a full room where people, quite frankly, some of those bikes may be more expensive than some of the cars. <laughs> <laughs> there was a concern in the pre-meeting about the neighbors surrounding the development and that they now have to fight for a lot of parking because of the parking ratio that, that has been um, accommodated here. And so is, is this something that I don't know if you had engaged with the neighbors about it? Um, yes, we act, well, we have, we have engaged in them and additionally that as Kyle indicated, we were at a, um, you know, the neighborhood meeting and about six people showed up. Um, they're all very supportive generally parking did come up and I think they did like the bike and but specifically um, close to the streetcar I mean I think that the streetcar is a huge proponent of, or you know advocate for this to uh, they firmly believe that that's going to be utilized heavily w with these people uh, yes yes they definitely believe that as so everybody good Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Eric? Mike, if you could come back up. Sorry, I just thought of something. Um, I know this is not the TIF application before us. It is my understanding that will be coming forward in future months or Yes, we intend to whatever. submit the TIF application very soon. Do you um, or Kyle know the approximate um, cost of the project and uh, also do you have a, a level of of rents that that you can share at this time or I don't know if that's coming down later down the road so yeah, sorry I think that was gonna be part of the tip application sure. but um, I believe our costs are um, I'm gonna say 26 million but yeah. that's fine. I do I work on a lot of projects Just ballpark. So, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. but it is a significant I mean the project and a tip yeah and it um, and so part of the TIF will be part in the district also. Like the project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I will double check that, but I'm almost pretty sure it's 26 total. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So obviously, uh, we had a lot of discussion in the pre meeting ab about this site and this project. Um, obviously, the board shared concerns about parking ratio and levels. Um, it's actually closer to Leavenworth Street than what I had said in the pre meeting. I said a couple of blocks, really, it's only half a block from an area that. You know, could be supported for TOD zoning. Basically, all the fronting southern properties on Leavenworth Street are in the TOD area, so this is just off. Um, you know, as a department in the city, we have not yet modified and expanded any zoning code changes or zoning areas as it relates to the streetcar. But of course, we have the previously approved Urban Core Housing and Mobility TIF District and Influence Area. And this site is located within the influence area. And I know we're not here be, um, to talk about TIF, but there will be um, you know, an application for TIF for this project, which would have a contribution to the, the streetcar system. And really, these are the types of projects and, and densities and developments that are needed to support the streetcar. So um, we understand there's a little bit of concern with, with the parking ratios. Hey, I remember when Stephen Held came in you know, a handful of years ago, and there was concerns about the parking ratios for his other uh, smaller sites that you can see in that exact photo with the townhomes and the individual lots for sale. And I, I know Stephen has transitioned more to the multifamily product. Um, you know, but this is, it, it's a very dense neighborhood, including the work that was done with Urban Village, you know, dating back a, a number of years ago. And we currently have projects that we've recently approved along Leavenworth for uh, multifamily and reduced parking. So, um, you know, we, we I understand, you know, the concerns when you look at it, 188 units and the zoning code as written, which is a very suburban uh, zoning code, but that would require 282 parking stalls. So when we analyze this and use a similar ratio to what the TOD would support, you know, that takes it down to um, being able to support the 147 units. Prior to that, there was more of a one-to-one -one unit to, to parking ratio that was kind of standard for a lot of areas um, redeveloped with PURs in, in Omaha. But there have been other areas, you know, I think of a few sites specifically on Dodge Street, 
that we have gone lower than that ratio just because of uh, whether it's the orbit line or other available transportation. And as a city, we need to continue to move towards that. And for us to be successful and take that next step and to utilize that the redeveloped sites that we have in our city, you know, we have, we've talked about it. We have a finite area of growth out suburbia and, uh, and out west and some areas, especially southwest, we're up against that ridge line. You know, we have future growth area in the northwest part of our city, but really we need to take renewed focus and there has been, um, I think, a, a great examples of redevelopment and projects and sites such as this. So, you know, I understand the concern, um, but as a result of that streetcar effort, and we, t we talked a, a little bit about it, um, you know, as part, as part of the financial model and being able to support that, you know, the densities that are needed for that, you know, transportation and development system is, you know, we've identified blocks and, you know, within the, the core area as well as the influence area. And, you know, this is exactly the type of project that, you know, does support, you know, the improvement and, and development of that streetcar. So, um, there are several modifiers that are related to the um, PUR, setbacks, impervious, maximum coverage, as well as a few others. Um, you know, we are really appreciative of the development team and, and working with us. We think the breaking up of the, the northern building with the courtyard that Kyle had mentioned, um, just breaking up the massing of that building is an important component. Um, so we're really pleased with where we have come, you know, with the several meetings that we've had with the development team. That being said, approval of the staff recommends approval of the rezoning from R6 and R7 to R7 and approval of the major amendment to the PUR overlay district subject to submission of acceptable final plans prior to city council. Okay. Any additional comments? Recommendation, the way that I read it in the recommendation report, it's based on the location and close proximity to the pending streetcar if the streetcar wasn't even in play and we're still using the PUR uh, mechanism, would we be okay with the parking reduction? I think based on past history, without the streetcar going in, we would require some additional parking stalls. Okay. okay. Any additional questions, comments? Do we have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Uh, I'm going to vote no, not because I'm against the project, but I just do have concerns about the parking being tied to the, the rationale for the parking reduction being the streetcar, and there's still a lot of, a lot of questions out there. So that, that's the only reason why I'm voting no. the city. Thanks for the comments there. I appreciate that. I'd say that I do have concerns about the parking as well, but I'll go ahead and vote yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm similar to both those, but I, I will vote yes. 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 And that was the last item on the agenda. Thanks for coming. Thank down. you. Thanks, guys. And those, for you this, too. The bike rooms here is like a full 40, it's almost like a Are you here? Were you here for this, or? No, this is just spec. Oh, just spec. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, were you here for? Okay. All right. Hey, we love visitors. Thanks for coming down. Okay. Uh, for the uh, uh, minutes for the pre-meeting and the public meeting for February, do we have a motion? So moved. So move. Approve. <laughs> okay, we have a, a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Yes. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Debbie, please record the vote. Yes.
Say what?